Hey everybody and welcome back to the Motor One channel. Today we're taking our first look at the 2021 BMW 4 Series Coupe and Jeff Perez, Motor One's senior editor, is joining me. What's going on, Jeff? Oh, it's all good, Clint. How about you? Not too bad. Uh, we are taking our first look at the 2021 4 Series and although it would be very easy to literally just talk about this car's face the entire time, we'll try to go a little bit beyond that. Um, yeah. But let's get right into it with the design because that's of course going to be the headline with this car. Uh, BMW gave us some stats compared to the new 3 Series with which of course it shares a lot and then also the prior 4 Series. So compared to the new 3 Series, this 4 Series is going to be 2.2 inches longer, 1 inch wider, 2.2 inches lower, and of course it shares the same wheelbase. Compared to the old 4 Series, this is where it gets interesting, it's 5.2 inches longer, 1 inch wider, and just a little bit taller. So those are some definitely new proportions for this car. Give me your first impressions on the design. Uh, first impressions, I, I like the bold approach. I don't know if it's good looking or attractive, but I, I definitely think that it's something that people are gonna talk about for better or worse. So I like that, um, but I think the rest of the body is is really nice looking. You get the drag coefficient down from 0.29 to 0.25 versus the previous model, so that's always good. Uh, the headlights are nice, the taillights are nice, the shape is really nice. So if you can get over those big kidneys up front, I think the rest of it looks pretty good. I'm not gonna let you get off the hook that easily. Uh, the <laughs> car leaked over the weekend. I mean, we've seen it, what? We saw it in concept form first. Then we saw a couple leaked images, I believe, even before this weekend. So we knew for a while now that they were taking this direction with the grill. But this is our first time seeing what well, we got the the official images earlier this morning. So we've been looking at it for a couple hours now. Mm -hmm. Has it grown on you over the course of the day? Because I, I can't even tell you how many times I've gone in circles with this design. It has. I will say that the 430, the base model, yeah, uh, doesn't look great with the dual kidneys because you don't have a lot of the same accents that you get on the 440. Um, but the 440 looks like properly aggressive with those kidneys and all the other vents and the big wheels. I think it's a good look. Uh, it's it's very hit or miss, obviously, but I think that the people who want the sportier, more aggressive version are going to like those big kidneys. And I'm glad you pointed that out because there are some differences between the 440 and the 430. We'll talk about power in just a second, but also the 440 is an M 440. So it gets right. the M sport package on it. And like you just pointed out, uh, changes a couple of things aesthetically and makes the car look a lot more aggressive. We have a couple images that I'll put up right now that show the two side by side. And I actually agree with you. I think if you do the 40 treatment, or I guess I should say the M sport treatment, which you can also get on the 430, uh, it looks better, but I, I don't know. I can't get behind it. I really can't. And it's not just the face. I mean, that's the biggest deal to me, but mm -hmm. there's just something about this that doesn't have the magic of the last four series, which was the first generation of it. If you look at the side profile of it, I see a lot of eight series, especially when you can start to see the curvature of the taillights. But honestly, if you spin this thing around, and look at the rear end, I, especially in the lighting signatures, even see like Acura Type S from just a couple of days ago. I just don't see enough originality in most of the design. And then the face, which is for sure where they took the biggest leap, I think it's a big miss. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have the same opinion. I know Twitter has already been talking about it and, and hating on it, but I, I like it. I like the general just aggressive approach. Cause like you said that the last four series was nice. It looked nice, but it was kind of anonymous. Um, so to go from one extreme to the other, I think that is either going to work or not work. But I, I kind of like the approach. So there's we saw the bigger grill happen with the X7 and then the latest Gen 7 series. And I remember distinctly you telling me immediately that you liked both of those designs. I this do. Is the first time we see the ginormous grill. Um, coming to a smaller vehicle. This car is obviously not the same size as an X7 nor a 7 Series. It's a lot smaller in its packaging. And this grille is bigger than both of those cars. Yeah, well, it's a different shape too because on the 7 Series and the X7, they're, they're pretty equally wide as, as well as tall. Um, here, they're like just super tall and they're kind of narrow comparatively. So that's, that's the only new thing I would say that's different versus the, the X7 and the 7 Series. 
best angle for you is what? Um, I like the front three quarter on the 440i. I think it looks good. When you see the when you see the grill with the with the profile and with the rear, you know that that sleek shape out back. I think it looks really good. The only thing I will say, and I know we talked about this a little bit offline, was the um, license plate because every press yeah. picture that they sent out has the European license plate, and I think that looks pretty bad. Um, but in the U.S., maybe if you're in a state that doesn't have a front license plate, like us here in Florida. It, it won't look as bad. And just to let everybody know, the only images we have of the car, both video and still images, are from Germany. So it's the European model that's shown. We don't have any that show off right. what it's going to look like with a U.S. license plate. But I think it's going to look even worse. Just the <laughs> license plates are shaped compared to the, the longer, more horizontal European ones. Um, before we yeah. move on to powertrain and interior, best angle for me is pulled into the garage with the lights turned off. <laughs> I, I I cannot keep looking at this thing. I hope it grows on me over time, but it's a big miss for me. And if you disagree, which I'm sure many of you do, feel free to let us know. Um, going back to the comparison between 430 and 440, there's some big things to point out with the engines and specifically the 440. We also saw some of this happen with the 5 Series debut just a couple of days ago. 430 is going to use a two liter single turbocharged four cylinder. It's gonna be good for 255 horsepower and 294 pound feet of torque. And that'll get you to 60 miles per hour with the X drive all wheel drive in 5.3 seconds. And then the bigger M44i, again with the X drive, is going to use a three liter single turbo inline six cylinder. And that'll be good for 382 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque which gets you to 60 in 4.3 seconds. With all wheel drive. With all wheel drive, that's right. Yep. I think it's uh, the the move to an inline six with a with a starter generator makes sense. I mean, Mercedes is doing it, Audi's doing it, so I don't know why BMW would, would try and do differently. Um, and it's a nice bump over the previous gen. I mean, the, this inline six and the four cylinder are both more powerful than their you know, counterparts. Um, so it sounds like it's going to be good on paper. And back to the dual kidneys for a second. In the uh, press release, they specified that the kidneys were there to help cooling with this advanced new powertrain. Which thank I don't you know for reminding me. The quote totally that I wrote right. down, Yeah. The I don't quote know if that I wrote totally down that, but... striking and uh -huh. provides adequate cooling because you need to poke yeah. a hole in the car's face that big just to get it to cool I down. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for letting me not miss that. Um, but you're right, the 48 volt system, the starter generator only comes with the inline six. So the 430 is not going to get that. But like you pointed out, um, it's going to do a couple of things. It's going to power the car's electronics for a longer period of time. Uh, it's going to make the start stop system a little bit more smooth off the line. It just makes it easier, which is something that we all welcome because sometimes those start stop systems are just are not that smooth. Um, and then it'll give you, I think, 11 11 woo extra horsepower when you absolutely floor it with the pedal all the way to the ground yeah i mean 11 is and I, th those extra 11 horses are almost 400 horsepower that's not a bad number it's not a burn of course we know that faster versions of this car are obviously to come we already have spy shots of I think both the m3 and the m4 that they've been testing for a while now so we'll be excited to see those when they do to get here um, any other thoughts on the engine before we move on to interior? Um, not really. Like I said, they're just more powerful all around, both the four cylinder and the six. Um, you get that mild hybrid. I'm sure that'll help with fuel economy, even though they haven't released those numbers. Um, but I'm excited to drive it. It sounds like it'll be pretty good. Yeah. And then both of those engines are going to pair to an eight speed automatic transmission, which is pretty much found entirely in BMW's line. It's a really nice, smooth transmission that we've seen over and over again. So it should be good stuff. We've driven the yeah. 3 Series not too long ago, but obviously hadn't have, haven't had a go in the new 4 Series as it just debuted. Um, looking at the interior, I'm, I guess just the negative guide today, but I feel like all BMWs are really just looking like carbon copies of each other on the yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if it's a bad thing. I think the interiors are nice for the most part. Um, we've had some issues electronically with the with the X7 and the Z4 and some of the others we tested. So hopefully they've fixed some of that. Uh, I know that's iDrive 7. So 
I don't know. I, I don't hate it. It's just a carbon copy, like you said. So yeah. Um, mostly the same as some of the other new BMW products. Jeff just pointed out it's going to get iDrive 7, which is the latest infotainment uh, technology package. So that's going to be an optional 10.2 inch sensor touchscreen. And you can also upgrade to the 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. There's going to be smaller versions of both of those things in the standard car. So it's all digital all around now. Um, I can see some differences. It doesn't have that weird looking crystal shifter in the 8 series. So they're doing a couple of things to differentiate it. But this is very standard BMW at this point, which, like you said, is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's all just starting to really blend together. Yeah. Yeah, I like the crystal shifter. Yeah. Hopefully that's an option down the line, but... <laughs> Crystal Zipper and a couple other things. Yeah. I should also mention my last note down is that you're going to get standard wireless Apple CarPlay and standard uh, wireless Android Auto as well to go with that. That's what you were referencing specifically, I think, when you said we've had some connectivity issues with some of the test cars we've yeah. had in the past. And it seems to be specific to iDrive 7. We've figured mm -hmm. out, right? Yeah, because we had the X2 with iDrive 6 before that carried over. And there are both positives and negatives because iDrive 6, you did have to pay the subscription fee. I think it was right. like 85 bucks a month. Um, but the, the connection was seamless for us. And then once they swapped over to iDrive 7, which is you know now free, no longer subscription service, um, we've had just like on and off connectivity issues with some of the cars we've tested. Uh, but when it works, it works really well. So hopefully that's the case here. As they keep bringing it to more products, I'm sure they're ironing, ironing out some of the kinks as well. Jeff Perez, any final thoughts on our first look, the 2021 BMW 4 Series Coupe? Grand Coupe is probably on the way, so we have to call it 4 Series Coupe for now. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to see how it drives, mostly, because I think we, we can all really look at it and give our opinions, positive or negative. But um, I think the, the setup sounds exciting, the powertrain, the proportions. I, I'm excited to, to get behind the wheel of it eventually. That's a good place to end for now. We are both very excited to drive it. Um, and now we get the fun part, the internet's reaction to seeing the food. <laughs> and I'll wait to read the comments uh, when this thing goes up on the website. Jeff Perez, thank you for joining us. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in for our first look at the 2021 BMW 4 Series Coupe.